Hi there, Potion Masters chapter 39. The next few moments passed by in a blurry haze. Gordy heard screams from both Esmeralda and his mother. He felt the sting of the needle at his throat, but then it fell away as his mom launched a gleaming golden potion acro across the room. It hurtled end over end and Gordy watched it tumble as if it was traveling in slow motion. There were so many sounds, the clatter and splashing of the overturned cauldron, the hissing of noxious steam rising in the air, and through it all, Esmeralda never stopped screaming. Then he blacked out. When Gordy woke up, he was in bed, but not his bed. His bed had a fluffy down comforter and an X-Men poster above the headboard. Still, the bed felt warm and safe. He blinked his eyes several times and stretched. Hello, a soft voice said next to his ear. Ah, Gordy belted out in surprise. You're not my mom? No, I am not, the man answered. He was wearing scrubs and a pair of wiry glasses that rested halfway down the bridge of his nose. He looked like a doctor, but something told Gordy that he wasn't a regular doctor. The man pressed the end of a stethoscope to Gordy's chest and listened to his heartbeat. Who are you? Gordy asked. My name's Parley, and I'm not a doctor. I didn't think so. However, I do study dire substances for a living, like the one you ingested two days ago. Two days ago? Gordy sat straight up. I've been sleeping for two days? Yes, Parley removed the earbuds of his stethoscope. From what I can tell, you seem to be faring better now. What does that mean? Gordy asked. I don't know, Parley said with a half-hearted shrug. Could mean the effects of the strange potion you drink had no lasting impacts on your insides. Bizarre as that would seem. The door to the room suddenly burst open and Gordy's mom and dad appeared. Oh, thank heavens. His mom closed her eyes and pressed her hand against her chest. Hey, Gordy said, his voice shaky and unstable. Both parents looked on the verge of tears and Gordy was about to join them. Gordy's mom threw her arms around his shoulders and hugged him tighter than he had ever been hugged. Hey, Gordo, his dad said, how are you feeling? Gordy was glad to know his dad was safe. The last time he had seen him, his dad had been mummified in Bolter's tranquility swath. Fine, I guess. Other than disoriented, Gordy felt good, actually. Maybe the Eternity Elixir did that to you when you drank it. What happened? We almost lost you several times, his mom looked at Parley. How, how are his vitals? Yeah, he is showing any side effects. It, excuse me, is he showing any side effects, his dad asked. Everything seems ship shape, Parley answered. Excellent blood pressure, normal temperature, breathing is regular, though he does snore, he winked at Gordy. That was an incredibly stupid thing you did, Mrs. Ditzer said to Gordy. You're lucky to be alive. I don't ever want to go th some, through something like that again. I didn't know what else to do, Gordy said in his defense. You were to do exactly as you were told. Trying to be a hero was not the distraction, the instruction. Gordy stared at the sheets, not wanting to make eye contact with his mom's intense gaze. He'd definitely put her through a lot. I'm sorry, Mom. His dad reached over and squeezed Gordy's foot. You were very brave, and you dealt with more than a normal 12-year-old would have ever had to deal with. Yes, that's true, she sighed with a sigh. She agreed with a sigh. If it wasn't for you, Gordy, we would be in worse shape. Gordy glanced up at them and smiled weakly. But I'm afraid we're going to have to ground you, his dad said. Ground me? Gordy asked, but then nodded, not surprised. I guess I knew that might be coming. Yep, you can no longer go down to your mom's lab ever again. Are you serious? Gordy's eyes widened. That seemed extreme, even considering all the trouble, trouble Gordy had caused. Have you seen our house lately? Gordy's mom asked, smiling. The whole thing burned down. There's no lab left. I suppose we can make an exception for the lab we built, build in our next home. Whenever that happens, Gordy exhaled and slumped against the headboard. His dad whispered something to Mrs. Stitzer and she nodded. I'll be there shortly, she answered. Mr. Stitzer turned to Gordy. I have to go, pal. I have a meeting with our insurance company. They want details about the gas leak explosion. At least that's what, what we're calling it. There had to be some sort of gas used in the attack on our house, right? Gordy grinned sheepishly at his mom. That was definitely not my fault, he said. You're the one who sent Bolter and Zelda to help. She sucked back on her teeth. I guess I did set us up for disaster. 
hopefully the insurance company will cover some of the damages but we're going to have to move unfortunately we'll stay with grandma and grandpa stitzer for a while gordy's dad, dad leaned forward and kissed gordy on the top of his head i love you gordo he said i'll be back in a few hours he said goodbye to gordy's mom and to parley and then exited quietly out the door what is this place gordy asked staring around the room this is my home parley said i'm parley remember we've just met he held out his hand and Gordy shook it. I'll leave you two alone. If you need anything at all, I'll be downstairs. He excused himself from the room. Gordy's mom glanced at her fingers. Harley's a very skilled filter, someone you, who can remove ingredients and potions from inside you. There are only a handful in the world, and he's the resident biofilter at BREW headquarters. The elixir shut down your body completely. Normally, we would have given you something to counteract the potion you drank, but there was no way to make an antidote to help it work its way out of your system or even stabilize you while it remained. The Eternity Elixir was different from anything we've ever dealt with. Even after the glass vial refilled the liquid with the liquid, we could detect trace amounts still in your bloodstream. So we had to remove the dangerous ingredients from inside you. She paused to collect her emotions, her jaw clenched, her voice trembling. We had to work fast and without making any mistakes. We were fortunate the best filter in the country happened to live so close by. Who's we? Gordy asked. Everyone. We've all been here for the past two days watching over you. Your father, Bolter, and Zelda. And let's not forget me, Mrs. Stitzer. Max poked his head through the doorway. Hey, Max, Gordy said, relieved to see his boisterous friend. Gordy's mom smiled and nodded. I have to admit, Max definitely impressed me with how concerned he was for your well-being. I practically held your hand the entire time, Max added. Though he looked a little tired, Max appeared to be all right, as did Adeline. She was standing behind Max, as if debating whether or not she should join them. Why are you hanging out in the hall? Gordy asked her, motioning for Adeline to join them. Adeline stared at her shoes, but slid into the room. She thinks everyone's still mad at her for getting kidnapped by Esmeralda, Max said. I do not, Madeline protested. Yes, you do, Max rolled his eyes. He cupped his hand around his mouth and leaned close to Gordy, and for good reason, too. Now, now, Max, Gordy's mom said. Adeline did a pretty good job taking down Yeltsin all by herself. Gordy remembered Adeline fighting Yeltsin just before his mom appeared in the vessel room. Yeah, what happened? One second you were being held hostage, the next you were standing over the rush and kicking him. Adeline grinned. I can't take all the credit for that. Your Aunt Priscilla told me what to do, and then she took care of the rest. My vent treat trap couldn't never dropped see could have never dropped someone as big as Yeltsin without some help. Aunt Pris stood in the doorway leaning against the jam, and Adeline was brave enough to heed my instruction without any hesitation. You have great friends, Gordy, loyal and strong, the best kind there is. Aunt Pris looked just how Gordy remembered her. A a slightly younger and wilier version of his mother. She had auburn hair and wore a long black sweater that ended just above her knees. Hey, buddy, her eyes glistened as she looked at Gordy. Your Aunt Prish showed me a shrunken head, Max said with a cheerful grin. She did? Gordy asked. It was awesome. Max rubbed his hands together. I threw up a little. Max, don't we need to be somewhere right now? Adeline prodded Max in the ribs. I don't have anywhere to go, Max said with a shrug. You're seriously impossible. Adeline grabbed Max's sleeve and tugged him toward the door. Once they were out of the room, Aunt Pris moved slowly to the side of the bed. She looked at Gordy's mom for a brief moment and then timidly rested her hands on Gordy's pillow. You're mad at me, aren't you? Gordy opened his mouth to answer her, but then closed it abruptly. Was he mad at her? He didn't know the story behind her decision to send the eternity elixir to his home. But it had to be due to circumstances beyond her control. The Aunt Pris, he knew, wouldn't want any harm to come to him or his family. Gordy shook his head. No, I'm not mad, but you owe me. She smiled and tussled his hair. Big time. Do you want a shrunken head as well? Two shrunken heads, Gordy held up his fingers. Two? She laughed and then narrowed her eyes. What about Max's shrunken head? Gordy snorted. No way. That's as, as small as his head could ever get. Everyone was safe. Gordy's family, his best friends, and now and his t two new Elixir's friends, Bolter and Zelda. He couldn't have asked for a better result. Yes, his family would have to move and start over, but seeing his mom standing beside the bed, smiling down at him, made everything just fine. 
What happened to Esmeralda? Gordy asked. She's been banished, his mom answered. Really? Gordy nibbled on the inside of his cheek. You banished her? Where? Wanda frowned. It wouldn't be safe to tell you. But rest assured, she is far from here and will not be doing any more damage to her home anytime soon. There were others too, Yeltsin and those other creeps. Gordy recalled being held captive by Dieter and Burke in their living room. What happened to them? Just a minute, waiting for a lawnmower to pass. Gordy's mom exchanged a tired look with Aunt Pris. They're on the move, but BRW should be rounding them up soon enough. Don't worry about them, Gordy, Aunt Pris said. They were just Esmeralda's hired help. Waiting. Without her at the helm, they'll want no part of BREW or any of the Stitzers for that matter. I can't stop thinking about what, have, what could have happened had you not been so level-headed, Gordy, or had you not shown up when you did. Gordy added, that was lucky. It was close, his mom agreed, but it was more than luck. We had a little help. From who? Wanda looked at Priscilla. I'm going to wait just a minute. Wanda looked at Priscilla as she pulled out the familiar glass vial containing the Eternity Elixir. I made a promise, Gordy. One I suppose I should keep. And I'd like to take you on a trip with me as soon as you're up for it. Gordy leaned forward, resting his hands on his legs. A trip? Where? I think it's time for you to meet your Grandpa Brooke.